Yang berhormat Puan Raja Zuraida Kamarudin, Minister of Housing and Local Government. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Barry Gaw, Chairman of KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Dr. Ko Peng Kang, President of FIAPSI Malaysia, the International Real Estate Federation. Tan Sri Lee Kim Yu, Advisor to KSI. Tan Sri Majid Khan, Deputy Chairman of KSI. Datuk Datuk, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera, dan salam selamat datang. At the outset, it is my honor and pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to our Honorable Minister for taking time off her very busy schedule to be present with us here this morning to deliver the keynote address at today's housing summit. We believe that this is a timely and apt event to enable the key stakeholders in the industry to take stock of current developments in the property sector and to assess future trends, opportunities and challenges ahead. The COVID pandemic has impacted all companies and all industries. The housing and property sector has its own share of challenges. We hope that today, we can discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the housing and property sector and be updated on key trends and the market outlook for this industry. It has been pointed out many times that the property industry has links directly with many supporting and ancillary industries. One count has it at over 100 supporting and ancillary industries that are supported by the property industry. So if the property sector slows down, it will invariably have an impact on the wider economy and many other sectors. I believe that going forward, the housing and property industry faces what I would describe as a three I's and three C's challenges. The three I's are innovation, investment, and incentives. The property sector needs to embrace innovation going forward as we see the greater impact of technology, including AI, big data, robotics on the property industry. Today, we are seeing virtual fairs being held everywhere and that this new property technology will have a big impact for the industry going forward. At the same time, the property industry also needs new investors and also foreign investments for the sector to be revitalized. And of course, the property sector will continue to depend on government incentives to be able to stay viable and successful to reignite growth in the sector to be the key driver of economic growth for the country. The three S are sustainability, security, and smart cities. Sustainability in the property sector is an important issue that needs to be increasingly addressed as buyers would want to look at the clean, sustainable environment to live in. Security at home is also a very important consideration for house buyers and providing the sense of security is important to ensure that people feel safe. And increasingly, we see smart cities all over the world making city living more exciting and interesting. Hence, I believe that the sector needs to take into consideration these three I's and three S challenges. We also hope that the government will ensure the continued healthy growth of the property sector and ensure that both developers and buyers have sufficient access to funding and bank financing, both end financing as well as other needs of the developers and buyers. The private sector, I believe, would also like to see 
faster approvals, less bureaucracies, and to have certainty, clarity, and consistency in policy formulation and policy implementation, the three C's of policies. It is therefore our hope that during the course of the conference today, our very many speakers will be able to share with us their insights, their knowledge, and their experiences, and how we can rebuild and reignite the growth of the property sector as a key engine of growth for the country. Let me end by thanking our many speakers and sponsors for your support of today's events. And thank you once again to the Honourable Minister for being with us here today. And as tomorrow is Malaysia Day, I wish everyone Selamat Hari Malaysia and Salam Papaduan. Sekian terima kasih. Thank you, Tan Sri, for your welcome remarks. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is now with great honour that I invite Yang Berhormat Puan Haja Zuraida Kamarudin, Minister of Housing and Local Government Malaysia, to deliver the opening keynote address. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalam Wala ashrafil wa musalin Wala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, I think it's a, quite a good event That uh, normally people go for this uh, virtual meeting And so and so forth At least today I get to meet you people from the industry Alhamdulillah Shabbat tanya to KSI For organizing this event even though most of us are supposed to put on our masks, but you either right social distancing, then we are okay. Because otherwise the minister will be getting fired by the netizens. <laughs> they ask you to resign uh, for not controlling the crowd, okay? So, but uh, with your mask, at least we can still have eye contacts. At least we can do that. So thank you very much, uh, Tansri uh, Berigo, the chairman of KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Uh, for organizing this event together with his, comite his committee, Mr. Uh, uh, Tansri Majid Han, the Deputy Chairman, and then Tansri Michael Yeo, President of KSI, Tansri Lee Kim Yu, the Advisor to KSI, and uh, Datuk Ko Peng Kang, the President of PIBCI Malaysia, just being appointed. And uh, the moment he got appointed, he texted me, YB, I'm the, now the President of PIBCI. Congratulations <laughs> for the post. And uh, I think this esteemed uh, committee is indeed uh, very uh, learned in terms of the housing and uh, property market of the country. And our media friends, I suppose, who are here and uh, all these uh, industry players uh, that is together today. So I would like to congratulate KSI for having this initiative to conduct this uh, summit, the Housing and Property Summit of 2020. And this is the first one. After not after COVID, because when we get out of the house, we thought it's COVID, it's over, we said it's post-COVID, but it's not post-COVID. So, but uh, during COVID times, and I think this is the first uh, summit that is being uh, conducted, being organized, and I think it's a very good initiative because we need to know where are we moving forward and where are we uh, now, uh, pre and during COVID times. Yeah. So before COVID, we were faced with these overhang issues in the market. Yeah, so now when we have COVID, then uh, then during COVID times we are being locked down. The people are being locked down in the house for five, three, five to six months, and after that now we are back to recover our economy for the country. So I believe during the COVID times, many of those people who are locked down in the homes, and I'm very passionate about those people in the B40 in the, uh, in the low cost housing. Where I believe when during COVID times, during the lockdown time, they were at home and I believe they start thinking to themselves, it's high time that I need to have a better home. It's high time that I need to have a bigger home because when it's lockdown time, they are all locked down in the homes with the big family members. And I think this has also matched with the ministry aspiration since 2018 that we will not build any more small houses. The ministry will build... Houses not less than 900 square feet from now onwards because you want to make sure that these people have a comfortable home and they have enough space to move around 
in the first place. So this is the initiative done by the ministry to make sure that especially the B40 and the M40 have comfortable homes. And it is quite encouraging when I go out to see some of these uh, developers. They came to see me, YB. It's not too bad. The, uh, the housing market is uh, picking up very well. So some of them was telling me that in one month they captured 1,000 sales and so on and so forth. And now I think uh, some of these gentlemen that took also mentioned to me that they're picking up. But uh, my, most, my biggest challenge is actually is the banking industry. This is the accessibility to the loans. This is the biggest challenge. So while the developers already learned their lesson not to build those more premium houses, those high-cost houses, because of the overhang pre-COVID, and we have problems getting rid of it. So, But now they realize that the market is in need of these M40 and B40 homes, those 500,000 and below. So this is something advantage and quite optimistic. Now they are looking at a new target uh, in their development. So this is something that uh, we would like uh, uh, the industry to move away from building these uh, premium houses, but we go to the M40 and the B40. So when I talk about the accessibility to banking sectors, so this is a challenge where in the new norms, the gig economy, where income is not documented uh, some of the times when people are doing jobs on uh, ad hoc basis, on consultancy basis, on uh, multiple jobs basis, uh, some extra jobs here and second job, third jobs and, and that kind of thing. So bank has to be more flexible to allow these people to be given a chance to have a bank loan to own a house. So we are still struggling with this, with the banks, with Bank Negara and the banks, where the bank will blame Bank Negara, Bank Negara will blame the bank. So this is something that since 2018 I'm facing with, and I hope any bankers here, so I hope, <laughs> so I hope this can be resolved, and uh, we look into assisting uh, these people to, to get their homes. But however, we're also trying to go into this rent-to-own scheme, where we hope that uh, by renting out for a number of years, three or to five years, the bank will consider their track record of payment, and it could be a document of support uh, to allow the banks to assess their credibility, and so that they can uh, be given loans. Yeah? So these are the efforts that are being done by KPKT as the housing regulator for the country. And we are also looking into the big data system where it is missing for many, many years. It's not being done, and now we are looking into it, and inshallah, we're becoming a big data system where it will help us. So this is why the failure of us fail to project, fail to give a good uh, uh, projection in terms of the housing needs, supplies and demand. So with the big data, inshallah, we should be able to uh, get the analytics or an analyze the figures or the data that we compile so that you can project yourself what should be the kind of houses you should build, what sort of price, what sort of location and uh, what sort of uh, uh, target that you are looking for. So I hope with all this initiative can um, increase or can enhance uh, improve the housing industry in terms of accuracy uh, in uh, creating new developments. So we shouldn't be too focused on now uh, on uh, housing that is uh, too high end. So we should be focusing on this M40 and the B40. And uh, we are trying, the government is trying to do our best uh, to make sure banking uh, comes in so that these people can bet have better accessibility to, the lo to the accessibility to the loans. And apart from that, we also do HOC campaigns, which is going to do uh, now. Yeah. So until uh, 2021, uh, May 2021, so this is something that uh, has good record. In the last 2019 that we did uh, HOC, we make uh, big uh, sales from that, uh, uh, that campaign. And it was very encouraging. And in fact, the radar group and the developers were asking us to do it again, and we do it again. So by we're going to do it. We have, we have done it now. Now is we are going on already until May 2021. We extended to until May 2021. And the COVID law also we have brought into parliament has been approved, and we are giving. Uh, leeway or some exceptions uh, so that uh, those developers that are being faced with a uh, lockdown and uh, employment, uh, labors and that kind of thing are given time, uh, the six months uh, period. Even though the government stops at 31st uh, May uh, 2020, uh, 31st August 2020, but KPKT has 
uh, asked, uh, uh, requested to be given exception to December 2020 with regards to housing and developers in terms of late uh, delivery, in terms of late development, and so on and so forth. So these are the things that we are trying to support the industry so that the, the industry is getting more focused. So with this uh, summit today, <coughs> uh, the panelists, I think uh, all these uh, learned uh, panelists with regards to the housing industry, I think the title I thought it was like is is now uh, is the worst over or is it in a uh, is it in a crisis and what next? So you determine whether where we are now is it over or is it a crisis? And it has been all crisis all the time. Oh, <laughs> so what do we move on? So whatever it is, we are trying to move forward. But my focus, our focus, especially from the ministry, we want to provide homes, especially for the B40. This is of utmost importance for us, and we are looking out for schemes that can make them uh, 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 can make them uh, easily for them to own houses, or even not to own houses. At least they have a roof over their head. That is what we are working on. So, as far as you are concerned, I think after the summit, your resolutions probably can share with us. I think I would have my KP here. My director general should be one of the panelists. Jaya, where are you, Jaya? Are you hidden behind anywhere? <laughs> I thought I saw him as one of the panelists. Yeah, later, later maybe he's with us. So I hope that uh, you share with us your findings, your resolutions, and you can help us to uh, direct to do our uh, action plans uh, for this uh, future, and especially this post-COVID times. So I think whether COVID or no COVID, I think the housing industry is such that it is in a challenging position actually because like I said pre-COVID we have this overhang units issue and not sold and we have this accessibility to loans is so problematic and we still have that problem now yeah so I hope uh, having experienced COVID every sectors of this in, uh, industry will play their role to ease the way uh, to ease the path for us to uh, making housing uh, accessibility to all Malaysians, inshallah. So with that, once again, I would like to congratulate uh, KSI for having this initiative, having this property summit, and so that we can uh, get out some ideas from all of you. And thank you again, Tan Sri Berigo and the team uh, for having me here in this uh, esteemed event, I suppose. And I would love to come where I would want to promote housing uh, uh, industry or development industry for the country. Yeah, thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.